Hi, I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. Here in the United States, April is National Poetry Month, so I thought we'd take a look at an often overlooked Exeter poet named James Whitfield. Now, don't confuse him with the evangelical preacher George Whitfield, who we profiled in another Exeter History Minute. Although, feel free to go back and watch that one. One of the things we didn't mention in that piece about George Whitfield was that he was a strong supporter of slavery and pushed for its legalization in Georgia, where he maintained a charity-based orphanage. It's true that he argued for humane treatment of enslaved people, but slavery is slavery. There's no making that better. But you know who was very aware of that? James Whitfield, the poet, born in Exeter, New Hampshire. He was born in 1822. His full name, James Monroe Whitfield, was in honor of the current president at the time, James Monroe. James's father, Joseph, was from Virginia, where he'd been born enslaved about 1762. As a teenager, Joseph was able to slip away, making his way to Massachusetts, where he met Nancy Paul. Nancy was a freeborn woman from Exeter who descended from a noteworthy black family. Three of her brothers were Baptist preachers of some note, her sister Rhoda was married to Jude Hall, a formerly enslaved man who'd earned his freedom by serving in the army during the revolution. There's also an Exeter History Minute about Jude Hall, because it seems like we've got a lot of these. The couple married in 1797 in Newburyport, Massachusetts, but they decided to settle in Exeter. It's not too clear what Joseph did for a living, but at his death it was mentioned that he was a noted hunter and gardener. They had at least six children, most of them older than James, and the family lived on an unfinished road that the locals called Whitfield's Lane. Evidence for the road appears on this map made in 1832 by Phillips Exeter Academy. The land on the road was later bought by the Elliott family and the name changed to Elliott Street, which is what it is today. James' mother, Nancy, died when the boy was seven in 1829. By that time, he was most likely attending the town school. Exeter's schools weren't segregated by race, and he later mentioned that he'd been to school. If this is his true signature, he wrote a good hand. He may have moved in with one of his married sisters at this time because his father is listed in the 1830 census as living alone. After his father's death in 1832, most of the family moved to Massachusetts. From there, James made his way to Buffalo, New York, where he supported himself as a barber while writing poems on the side. These were frequently published in the abolitionist press. His poetry was a scathing condemnation of slavery and the American system which allowed it. James Whitfield was an abolitionist who felt that the only path to true freedom was through emigration. It's no wonder, really, if you've watched our video on Jude Hall, you'll see how three of Whitfield's cousins, all freeborn men, were kidnapped and enslaved while living on free soil. In his most famous piece called America, one line speaks of the present evil time seen freeborn men uncharged with crime consigned to a slaver's pen or thrust into a prison cell with thieves and murderers to dwell. It's a very real refre reflection by a man who knew firsthand that antebellum life for black Americans, even descendants of Revolutionary War veterans, could be uncertain and unsafe. This month or any month, check out the poetry of a man who was the son of an escaped slave, nephew of a patriot soldier, a man named for a slave-holding American president, Exeter native James Monroe Whitfield. This History Minute has been generously sponsored by Riverwoods of Exeter. And look for the Exeter Historical Society at www.exeterhistory.org.